Well, hi, wild kids. You know, all this year, our theme has been about construction, right? We have seen lots of pictures on the screen of hardworking construction crews. The building theme has helped us learn about building our lives on Jesus Christ. Well, we can see construction going on all around us. Workers building on the highways, businesses, building new homes. But did you know there is also construction work going on right now in heaven? It's true. That's what we're going to learn about this week. But first, I want you to imagine that it is a beautiful, warm, sunny spring day, and you're lying on your back outside on the green grass, watching the beautiful puffy clouds float by. Do you like to look for different shapes in the clouds? I do. Take a look at this one. Do you see what I see? I see a bunny rabbit in the clouds. Or how about this one? Does it look like an elephant to you? Well, when I look up at the clouds and sky, I love to think about Jesus and imagine what heaven looks like. Do you ever wonder about that? Well, we don't have to just imagine because the Bible gives us some very important information about heaven. In John chapter 14, Jesus is talking with his disciples and preparing them for the time when he would be leaving this earth and going back to heaven. Jesus would soon die on the cross and then be raised back to life after three days in the tomb. Jesus would appear to his disciples at different times after the resurrection so that they would know that he truly was alive. But after a period of 40 days, Jesus would ascend back into heaven to be with God the Father. Jesus wanted his followers to know what was going to happen to him, so that when it all took place, they would not be afraid or worried. Let's read Jesus' words in John 14, 1-3. Listen, this is Jesus speaking. He said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Well, from these verses, we know what Jesus is doing right now in heaven. What is it? Construction work. Yes, Jesus is preparing a place for us to be with him forever. And someday he will come back to earth to get us and bring us to heaven. And what an incredible place heaven is. Revelation 21.4 tells us that there will be no more tears, that God will wipe all the tears from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, no sadness, crying or pain, no sickness or diseases. You know, you won't get a sore throat or a cold or COVID And people won't die from things like cancer or heart disease. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the new body that God will give us. One that won't get old and weak and eventually quit working. It will be a body that is strong and will last forever. Revelation 21 also talks about the new city of Jerusalem that God will build. It will have streets, not of black asphalt or concrete like we have here on earth. No, the streets are made of pure, solid, sparkling gold. It says that the gates of the city will be made of precious jewels. It's so amazing to think about. Can you imagine it in your mind? 
If you have family members or friends who love Jesus and have died, did you know that you will get to see them again in heaven? I'm looking forward to seeing my parents and my grandparents again someday. You will also be able to talk to your favorite Bible heroes like Abraham, Moses, Daniel, and Ruth. Would you look for Jonah and ask him what it was like to be in the stomach of a whale? Or maybe you'll ask Mary how it felt watching Jesus die on the cross. Another wonderful thing about heaven is that there will be no sin. Remember, it's sin that brings pain and destruction to our lives. There will be no sin or temptation to turn us away from loving and worshiping God. Our hearts will be completely devoted to Him. The Bible says that we will spend our time serving and praising the King of Kings. You know, the best part of heaven is not that there will be no more suffering or death or that there will be streets of gold. The best part is the fact that God will be there with us. Revelation 21.3 says, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Wow, imagine what that will be like. Heaven is such a wonderful place. If you ask most people if they'd like to go there someday, they'll tell you, why, yes, of course. The problem is many people do not know how to get there. Can you get to heaven by car or train? No. Can you take an airplane or a spaceship? No. Many people think that you can get to heaven by doing good deeds or by being a good person. Is that true? I'm afraid not. Let's go back to Jesus' conversation with his disciples in John chapter 14. I want to read to you again and see if you can pick up what Jesus is saying. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. Oh, no, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. You know, Jesus' disciple Thomas did not understand the way to get to heaven. What did Jesus tell him? There's only one way to heaven, and Jesus is it. It's only by believing in Jesus Christ and receiving forgiveness for our sins and then loving and following him that we can go to heaven. There is no other way. Remember that almost everyone wants to go to heaven, but they might not know how to get there. We need to share with the world that they can go to heaven only through faith in Jesus Christ. Also, remember that Jesus is in heaven right now preparing a place for us, getting everything ready so we can be with him forever. Sometimes families may lose their homes because of financial difficulties or maybe in a fire, a flood, or tornado, or even an earthquake. Although losing a home can be a very hard situation to go through, we can be encouraged to know about God's promises to us for our future with Him. 2 Corinthians 5.1 says, Now we know 
that if the earthly tent or house we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built with human hands. Let's say the part of that verse that's our memory verse for this week. You ready? We have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built with human hands. 2 Corinthians 5.1 God has a wonderful place planned for us, heaven. We will have a new home there and new perfect bodies as his children. Remember, the only way to get there is by believing and following Jesus. Will you show others the way to heaven? And our theme tonight is heavenly construction. Jesus is building a place for us. Well, we want to continue our Dan Woolley story. And last time, we literally left Dan hanging in a sled as the rescuers were trying to pull him out through the elevator shaft. Some of the men were losing their grip on the rope, and the sled slipped off to the side. Dan was dangling in midair. Hang on! We're losing him! We're losing him! Someone shouted. Meanwhile, Dan's wife, Christy, was on an airplane headed for Haiti. She had gotten the news that Dan had been found alive, but he was still trapped under the collapsed hotel. It had been almost three days since the earthquake. Christy was planning to dig Dan out with her own bare hands if she had to. Christy's flight went to Dallas first and then on to Miami where she would still need to find a flight to get to Haiti. As Daniel precariously hung from the one rope that was holding the sled he was tied into, the other rescuers rushed over to help. With lots of grunting and groaning, they lifted the tilted, hanging sled back onto the track. Soon Dan could see his first rays of sunlight. The glare was so bright after being in the darkness for so long, it hurt his eyes. Dan prayed through his tears, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I never thought I would see the sun again. But you have watched over me, protected me, and now you have rescued me. Suddenly, Dan heard the clicks of dozens of cameras and saw photographers and news reporters lined up on both sides of his sled. Within seconds of Dan's exit from the elevator shaft, a medic took a needle and started an IV in Dan's arm. Others cut off his shirt and pant legs. As they checked his wounds, Dan saw a tall Haitian man walking toward him. His kind eyes connected with Dan, and his big smile widened. He bent over Dan and placed his hand on Dan's face. Hello, Danielle! Luxon, I am so glad to meet you. Dan thought of all they had been through together. They had checked on and encouraged each other. They sang songs and prayed together. And Luxon had asked Jesus to be his savior. Finally, Dan could see Luxon's face, and it looked beautiful to him. The medic made everyone stand back as Dan was placed on a gurney and loaded into an old van that was being used as an ambulance. As they were shutting the doors, someone shouted, Wait! It was Sam, the rescuer, and he had found Dan's backpack and handed it to him. Dan thanked Sam again for risking his own life to save him. Dan was brought to the U.S. Embassy, where a doctor examined him and said that he would be transported to Miami for surgery. The doctor said, I'm worried that you are at risk for kidney failure because of dehydration. I'm also concerned about your leg wound and the likelihood of infection. 
The laceration extends through your muscle and nerves all the way to the bone. Your leg may need to be amputated. Dan had not considered something like that. After all he had been through, would he really lose his leg? We'll find out next week as we conclude this story. So don't miss it and don't miss out on heaven. Remember, believing in Jesus and following him is the only way to get there. And remember, too, that Jesus is building a place for us. I'll see you next week, kids.